Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, Proverbs chapter 3. Let's turn to the book of Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 3. Got a lot of people gone this morning, it looks like, so. Sorry that the Lord just watch everybody when they're not here. Kind of worries me. We uh, should never pray for each other. Everything that's going on. So, uh, anyway, let's let's look here. Proverbs chapter three, and we're going to start in verse uh, thirteen. So, we've been talking about what the locusts have eaten, restoring what the locusts have eaten, and I'm going to talk about the subject of peace this morning. Uh, this will be a one timer. Uh, so, but just peace. I, we live in a world today where ain't very much peace, and I've talked about this subject before. But uh, I had a I had a situation this week that I ran into that. Uh, really made me to think about this message, really kind of brought it about, and I'll tell you about that at the end of the service but, uh, for an example. But uh, peace is something that, you know, the world really doesn't have much to offer. Uh, and uh, But Jesus has a great deal to offer about peace. Amen? Amen. We're going to talk about that today. So, restoring what the locusts have eaten, and that is peace. Uh, this world, as it stands, has robbed people of their peace. Uh, and it is, you know, kind of one of the things that is absent uh, from a lot of people's lives. I'm talking about believers here, not just lost people, but there's a lot of believers that do not live in the peace uh, of God's promises. And so there's no, uh, really that is an uncalled for situation. Uh, you and I as believers ought to have peace like nobody else because we know the promises of God or we should know them. Uh, and we embrace them, we believe them, and that in itself should cause us to have some peace about it. So, uh, anyway, let's look here. Proverbs chapter 3. We're going to look at the reason why people do not have peace. Proverbs 3.13. It says, Happy is the man that findeth wisdom, and the man that giveth understanding. For the merchandise of it is better than the merchandise of silver, and the gain thereof than fine gold. She is more precious than rubies, and all the things that thou canst desire not to be compared unto her. We're speaking about wisdom and understanding here, by the way. Length of days is in her right hand, and in her left hand riches and honor. Her ways are ways of pleasantness, and all of her paths are peace. She is a tree of life to them that lay hold upon her, and happy is everyone that retaineth her. If you will, let's bow our heads in prayer this morning. Dear Father in heaven, we come before you, God. We just thank you for the word of God, and we thank you, Lord, for the instruction that it gives us. We thank you, Lord, for the promises that, Lord, we can stand on, Lord, in confidence. And Father, we pray that in the name of Jesus, that right now, that you would empower me and, and help me to be able to uh, minister the truth to these people. God, I don't have this power in and of myself, and I know that it only comes from You. And I pray that Jesus, that You would help me through the Holy Spirit to be able to minister truth that these people can use as they leave here today and go out into the world tomorrow. And Lord, that it would be an encouragement to their life. And God, that it would help them to be able to live for Jesus. And Father, I pray that You'd help me to give them this truth in, in simple terms and, and just help me to be able to say what You want me to say. And God, I would ask you if there's anyone here that is without Christ this morning, that, that Jesus, that they would, uh, Lord, that the Holy Spirit would move upon them and help them to see their need for Jesus. And I thank you for those that have given their lives to Christ here lately. I thank you, Lord, that you're still uh, saving people and, and Jesus, that, uh, calling people out to be your children. And Father, I just give you thanks for that. And Father, I pray that you encourage uh, everyone that is here this morning. As we try to walk in the faith and give you the praise and honor in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right, let's look back at the scripture here. I don't want to read the whole thing again, but we're talking about knowledge and wisdom. I want to put special emphasis this morning on knowledge. Okay, on knowledge. It's a funny thing, by the way, how that the Holy Spirit works. Uh, Myrna could not have written a better article for the bulletin uh, than what I'm preaching about today. So me and her was thinking about the same thing, evidently. And uh, so we're talking about knowledge. Uh, one of the reasons people do not have peace, and we'll get to this later, but one of the reasons that people do not have peace is because they don't have knowledge. They don't understand what God has to say about things. So 
Uh, but before we get to that place, so let's look at this subject of peace. So when we think about peace, you know, when you talk about somebody to somebody about peace, often what the world looks at peace, they, they look at it as world peace. Uh, you know, the United Nations, the League of Nations before that, back in World War I, uh, was developed and formed to bring about world peace. And, and people have been trying to uh, achieve world peace since then. Let me ask you all something. I know I've asked this question before, but how's, how well has that worked out? Not very well. The world is still in much <coughs> war and much unrest and unsettled. Uh, it's, it's probably more so now than, than it's ever been. Uh, it seems like there is little peace as far as the world is concerned. So uh, when you talk about people, you know, two people about peace, they might think of world peace. And, and that peace, uh, that is failing, the world is failing miserable uh, in this arena. And I want you to understand something, only Jesus Christ is going to bring that kind of peace. He hasn't done that yet. Uh, Jesus came and, and they crucified Him. He rose again from the dead. But He promised us that He was going to come back. And when He comes back, He will rule as King of kings and Lord of lords. And I promise you this, He will bring peace to this earth that has not been seen before. Amen? And so only that kind of peace can be obtained through the Lord Jesus Christ. And will be obtained. It will be obtained through the Lord Jesus Christ. That in and of itself should give me a little bit of personal peace because no matter how bad things are getting in this world, I know that God is still in control, that God has a plan, and God's plan will be fulfilled. Amen? Mm -hmm. And so that gives me a little bit of peace uh, in and of itself. Uh, but there's another kind of peace that I'd like to talk about today. It's not world peace, uh, although we could spend some time and some sermons on that subject. Uh, but the peace I want to talk about today is personal peace. Because that's where we're at right now. Listen, that's where the, uh, if you will, where the rubber meets the road. That's where we live daily uh, with this struggle of personal peace. And that peace is also only found through the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? And uh, so Galatians 5.22 tells us uh, concerning the, the, the Holy Spirit, uh, the third the third thing that is listed there, Galatians 5.22, says the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace. peace. Okay, so that comes from God. That's the only way that real peace uh, can be obtained is through the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and you say, well, that's a gift of the Holy Spirit. Uh, let me tell you something. Until you become a child of God, you cannot receive the Holy Spirit. Uh, until you receive the Holy Spirit, you're not going to know real peace. Amen? Amen. And so uh, that kind of peace is also only found through Jesus Christ. The book of Romans chapter 10 and verse 15, Paul says this about the preaching that we do, that we preach the gospel of peace. And that is the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. So uh, the gospel that we preach, uh, the gospel, you say, well, that's my job. Now listen, that's all of our job is to teach and to preach, to testify and to witness of the gospel of peace. Amen? Mm -hmm. When you help somebody to come to know <laughs> Jesus, you have given them the gospel of peace. And that is the gospel that we preach is the gospel of peace. So I want to ask you a question. How does knowing Jesus bring peace into our lives. And we're going to look at three things uh, here this morning. How does knowing Jesus bring peace into our lives? Number one is it brings us at peace with the Father, with God the Father. So we can have peace with God the Father. The Bible tells us uh, in Romans chapter 5 and verse 1 that it, we can have peace with God the Father through the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. And so that is, that is how peace with the Father is obtained. And I'm going to explain that here in just a moment. But let's turn over to the book of Colossians, if you will. Colossians, in your New Testament. I tell you what, for those of you that uh, are fairly new to the faith, you might not know where some of these books are at. That's okay. Just listen up. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 20. So Paul says in Romans 5.1 that we have peace with the Father through the Lord Jesus Christ. He goes on and explains it a little bit deeper here in Colossians 1.20. He says that having made peace through the blood of His cross, 
By him to reconcile all things unto himself. By him, speaking of Jesus, I say whether there be things in earth or things in heaven. So how do we come to peace with God the Father? Through the blood of Jesus' cross. Amen? I want you to understand, when we were lost, if you're, if you're here and saved today, uh, that has not always been your condition. How many of y'all know that you're not born saved? Can you come to the place at some point in your life that you understand that you're a sinner? Uh, you understand that you're separated from God and you accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior and you become a child of God through Jesus Christ. But it, uh, let me explain what he's talking about here. He says that it, it, when we were lost, we were enemies of God. Amen? That we were at enmity with God. There was a division between me and God. And that division could not be overcome by anything that I could do. But Jesus comes and pays the price. He dies for our sins. And He makes a peace treaty, if you will, between me and God. He brings peace between me and the Father. He pays the price. He fixes what had separated us, and that was sin. You see, I have peace with God through the Lord Jesus Christ. Now let's look at the second thing. In Ephesians chapter 4, verse uh, 2. Let's turn over there, if you will. Just turn back with me a few pages. Ephesians chapter 4, in verse 2. He says that we are and we should have peace, especially among believers. We should have peace with one another. Let's look at here. He says, with all loneliness and meekness, in verse 2, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, in the bond of peace. There is one body, one spirit, even as you're called in one hope of your calling. So he's saying, hey, we can we have a new relationship as believers. Uh, we have become brothers and sisters in Christ. We have become one in the family of God. And he said that he is going to make peace between us. And I want to go a step further than that and say on a personal, on a, on a real personal level, uh, me, if you're saved here this morning and you're a saved family, your, your wife is saved, your husband's saved, you're saved, maybe some, if not all of your children are saved, that ought to be, bring peace into your home. Amen? I'm telling you, the home of a Christian ought to be one of the most peaceful places there is to find. Amen? Amen. Amen. It's just the way it is. And you say, well, that's not my home. But I'm going to tell you something. You, you're not wrapping your mind around what peace really is. You're not, you, you, you're not wrapping your mind around what God wants to give you. He wants to bring peace into your home. I'm telling you this. Jesus can take a home that is, that, is, that is busted. He can take a home that's on, on the rocks. He can take a home and a relationship that are all messed up. And Jesus comes on the scene and these people uh, give their life to Christ or, or they come to a place and understand what God has to say about it. And all of a sudden, peace can come to that home. Amen? Amen. Amen. Just, I know it's true. Let me give you a, uh, an example of what I'm talking about. So when Bridget and I first got married, I was very, we were very young, 18 years old. Uh, Julie came along very quickly, nine and a half months later, uh, to be precise. I mean, two, almost to the day, nine months and two weeks later. Uh, Julie was born. We were 19 years old. It was tough. I was very immature. Uh, I had a lot of, of issues that we've, I've talked about in the past with, with emotions and, and just had some things going on that I, I really had a hard time dealing with. And it was very difficult for us very early on in our marriage. For the first three or four years that we were married, Bridget would tell you, she's not here right now to defend herself, but uh, she would tell you that that first year of marriage was the worst year of her life. Don't say too much for me. Uh, but it's okay. Uh, but I'm going to tell you this. The more we grew as, a, as Christians, the more we I understood on a personal level, the more I understood about God, and I understood the Word of God, the more peace came into our home. 
And I'm just telling you this, that, that Jesus, and I was talking about this, some, somebody about this 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 week, and I don't remember who it was now, but uh, I was talking about this very subject. So listen, if it had not been for Jesus, we would not have made it. I'm just telling you the truth. So Jesus is able to bring peace between people. Amen? He's able to bring peace between us and God. He's also able to bring, bring peace between us and other people, especially people in our own homes or in our own church uh, body. The third thing is the one I want to put the most emphasis on this morning, and that is we can have peace in life. And I'm talking on a real daily, everyday walk, real level. Okay, I'm talking about when you get up and go to work tomorrow, when you get up and do whatever you do tomorrow, you can get up and we can have peace in life. Jesus can bring that, that type of peace. Uh, so 1st, 2nd Thessalonians chapter 3, uh, verse 16 tells us uh, that, that he brings, let's just turn over there and read it real quick. I don't want to misquote it. 2nd Thessalonians chapter 3. In verse 16. He says, Now the Lord of peace himself, this is what he's titled. This is the title given. He says, The Lord of peace himself give you peace always by all means. Okay, so he says, Let the Lord of peace give you peace always by all means. In other words, I think what he's saying here is we can, we can have peace in life. And he will give it to us in all by all means. I'm telling you, in every situation that you're in, how many of y'all believe that you can have peace in whatever situation that you're in? You can, but you have to go by very specific instruction to get that. And you, got to, you, you have to put your absolute faith in the Word of God and in Jesus Christ in order to obtain that. It cannot be obtained through human efforts. Amen? You cannot obtain it in and of yourself. You cannot obtain it by looking to me. You can't obtain it by looking to somebody else. Some people say, well, I'd have peace if these people would do this. You would not. Listen, don't depend on other people for your peace. Depend on one, and that is the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. He is the only one. They can make the difference. And I want to say this. The world has a different idea about peace. Just like it has a different idea. You know, the world is 180 contradictory to, to the things of God. They, they look at things different. The world equates peace with temporary things. It, it equates peace by temporary means. It says that if I can do this or that, or I can go here or there, if I can uh, be successful in this thing or that thing, if I can just, you know, do this with my life, then I would have peace. The world says that prosperity brings peace. Some people say, man, if I could just be a millionaire, I would just have some peace. I could feel good when I lay my head down at night. The world says if I could have good health, uh, I could have peace. If I could just know that I'm going to be healthy, I, I would have peace. The world says, hey, if I could just go out and just find happiness, I would have peace. The world might say, if I can just go out and, and have fun and, and do fun things, oh, I never get to do anything fun. And if I could go out and have fun and take a vacation or go here or visit this place or do this thing, then I would have peace. The problem with that idea is those things are all temporary. Those things are all exhaustible. If I can say this, those things are all uncertain. Now a person might say, well, if I was rich and if I had enough money, it wouldn't matter what happened in the world, I'd still have enough. I want you to understand something that you, you can lose. I don't care who you are, if your prosperity and your possessions, you think that's going to bring you peace, it will not. Because the richest people among us, I guarantee, are worried about the next dollar that they make. They're worried about losing money. They're worried about the, you know, whatever. And their peace just, it's not real. 
Look at the movie stars and singers. Look at the wealthy businessmen in the world. There just seems to be no real peace. Not really among them. Because they know that these things are exhaustible. These things are, they, they can lose them. And you think about this, and, and just think about the, the, your health or uh, whatever else you want to put in that list. Listen, there ain't, there's nothing certain about any of those things. And if you put your faith in things that are uncertain, here's what's going to happen. You're going to get stressed out about it. You're going to get worried about it. You're going to get worried about losing it. Amen? I mean, it's just anything in life like that. So those things cannot bring peace. I thought about this yesterday when I was thinking about the sermon. I thought, you know, we pursue these things. And some people, many of us, most of us, if the truth be told, most of us pursue these things with all our strength so that we can obtain peace. And what we find is the opposite effect. In pursuing these things to bring us peace, we find that they bring us stress. Amen? I mean, I don't know what I'm talking about. I, I'm this is for me. I get this. Because, so amen, if I could just do this, if I could just get through this, it's like that something's going on in my shop, and, and I think, man, if I could just get this done, I'm going to feel so much good. The problem with that is there's always something else. Amen. And we, we pursue peace, and we find that it brings us stress. So the only thing that can bring us real peace is the Lord Jesus Christ. So if Jesus brings peace, which if you're a born again believer, you receive the day that you got saved, how do we sustain it? Because I look at Christians' lives today, I look at my own life today, and I think, you know, I don't always live in peace. I don't. Matter of fact, there's weeks, maybe even months, they go by sometimes. I think, man, what happened to my peace? How do you all know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so uh, that peace, how do we sustain it? We received it. It's a gift of the Holy Spirit. Okay, it's a, it's a fruit of the Spirit. So how do we how do we sustain it? How do we live in it? Well, we live in it. Through, let's look back at the book. You don't have to turn there since we turned away from it. But the book of Proverbs tells us that the man that receives knowledge, it brings peace. So I'm going to tell you this, that the lack of knowledge will cause stress. Not just any kind of knowledge. I'm not talking about scientific knowledge. I'm not talking about knowledge in social studies. And, and I'm not talking about knowledge in history. I'm not talking about uh, knowledge in phonics. I'm talking about biblical knowledge brings peace. Amen? That the writer of Proverbs uh, was speaking of that very thing, that understanding of the things of God will bring peace. It will bring real happiness. It will bring real uh, confidence. Really, uh, the lack of confidence is the cause of stress. Because right. you're not confident in the situation that you are up against and that you face. So it's a lack of understanding that robs us, that devours our peace. So I told you I had a situation this week, and again, I'll talk about it at the end, but it made me to think about this because of a lack of understanding on my part. I got totally stressed out. And uh, so anyway, uh, understanding of what? So what we need to understand is the Word of God. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. Let's turn over to the New Testament for a moment. 2 Timothy. I've got a lot of Scripture today, but that's okay. If, you, if you're not quick enough to get to them, uh, just write them down and go back to them later. 2 Timothy chapter 3, and verse 16. It says, All Scripture is given by inspiration of God, the Word of God, the Bible. It is profitable for doctrine. In other words, it teaches you what you should believe. It is pro profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction. How many of y'all know that you live your life? You need some correction in it. Some reproof in it. How many of y'all know that sometimes you go the wrong direction and going the wrong direction on something in life is going to cause you stress? But if you know the Word of God, it's going to correct your course and it's going to bring peace as a result of that. Amen. Amen. He 
says good for reproof and for correction. It is good for instruction in righteousness. Man, I need instruction in my life. I don't, man, I don't always know what to do. I don't always know how to live. I, I don't know how to always make the right choices and decisions. You say, what's that got to do with righteousness? Listen, my life as a Christian should be directed by the Holy Spirit. My life as a Christian ought to reflect God's righteousness. Every decision, everything I do reflects His righteousness. So it is instruction in righteousness. It is practical everyday living. It instructs me on what to do. The Bible tells us in Psalms 37 and 31, verse 31. Psalms 37, verse 31 tells us uh, that the law of God it, it is in, your, in, in His heart and His steps will not slip. They will not slide. Listen, I need that. That's why I want my steps to be sure. How many of y'all like walking on it? And Brett, do you remember one time when we was, I know he remembers this, I'll have to ask him about it. But one time when we were uh, little boys, uh, we were going fishing with my dad. Dad loved to fish, and Brett didn't really like to fish all that much, but I loved to fish. And, and we went down to the river at my grandfather's house, and, and it had been raining, and, and, and we went down this steep bank, and Brett had his, I was in the, third band in the row here and dad was in the front and Breck had his fishing pole had a big old hook on it and we were going down the steep mud bank and Breck slipped and whoa hooked my dad right in the ear. <laughs> and I remember he's going oh oh <laughs> went right through the hard part of the year fishing trip was over I was upset I think I cried I didn't get to go fishing uh, <laughs> So, but anyway, I didn't understand. Man, just cut the line, but just finish, deal with it later. <laughs> but anyway, listen, his steps slid because it was a muddy bank. I'm going to tell you something. We are walking in a muddy world. Amen? Yeah, amen. Uh, it's slick, and it's, I mean, it, it, you, you need some sure pudding. Your footing as a believer is going to be found in the Word of God. If you don't have the Word of God in your life, I promise you, you are going to slip and slide in this world and you're going to have a hard time of it. And you're going to hurt yourself and you're going to hurt other people. Amen? Amen? And it's going to cause stress in your life. Psalms 119, 105 tells us that God's Word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. We live in a dark world, amen? A world that is full of sin, a world that's full of uh, trouble, a world that's full of uncertainties. And what I need as a believer is a light in my path that I should take. Every step I take, that light shines each step. It may not go way out there into the future of my steps, but I can promise you this, when I've got the light of the Word of God in my life, that when I take a step, it lights up in front of me. Every step of the way, it is a light to my path. It is a lamp to my feet. Without it, I will get lost. Without it, I'll take a wrong step. Without it, I'll step off in a, a hole or, or walk off a, a, an edge. When I have problems, it's going to cause me stress when I don't have the Word of God in my life. Listen, we, we allow, as believers, we allow a great deal of unnecessary emphasis. We allow, allow a great deal of unnecessary stress into our lives because we know so little about God's instruction. Now some people say, well, I go to church every Sunday. Great, I'm glad that you do, but understand this, that you think you're going to get enough to sustain your life from a 30, 45 minute sermon, you're wrong. That's right. Amen. You can't eat once a day, a week, and live, nor can you read the Word of God once a week and live. Amen. We know so little about God's instruction or we just don't truly believe it. There's some people that know what God has to say about things, but they don't really believe it. And embrace it. Embrace God's Word. Embrace God's promises. Know that it is absolute truth. Know that it has absolute instruction for your life. And I may not understand this thing that the Word of God is instructing me in, but I'm going to do it. Because I believe it's true. It's God's Word. Amen? Amen. 
Listen, many Christians, or not many, all Christians, all true born-again Christians may have the Holy Spirit. And if, you're, if you don't have the Holy Spirit and understand something, then God says that you're none of His. Amen? That's correct by our Scripture. So I know that every true born-again believer receives the Holy Spirit. When you get saved, you receive God's Spirit. It lives within you, but it has no platform to work off of when you do not have the Word of God in your life. When the Word of God is not a priority in your life, when the Word of God isn't uh, instructing your life, then the Holy Spirit has no platform with which to work. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 17 tells us that the, the you know, speaking of the armor of God, that the Word of God is the sword of the Spirit. It is your primary weapon. It is what God uses in your life by the Holy Spirit to fight your battles. Many of us are out there trying to fight our battles without the Word of God, and we're just so stressed out as a result of it. Amen. What are some of the things that devour our peace? Let's look at a few things real quickly. Psalms 119 and verse 11 says, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against God. Amen. So sin separates us from peace. Amen? As believers, sin will separate you from peace. Many Christians are living in sin, therefore they live stressed out lives. And they don't have the peace of God in their heart. Even though it's there, they can have it, but sin has separated them from it. David says in Psalms 119.11 that you, the Word of God will keep us from sin. None, for one thing, it will teach us what sin is and show us what to avoid. Amen? For another thing, when we get into sin, the Word of God, the Holy Spirit uses the Word of God to bring conviction into our life and get us out of that sin so we don't have to walk in it. Sin separates us from fellowship with God. And I'm just telling you right now, I know this to be true for myself. And it can desensitize our ability to hear God. Listen, you, you continue living in sin God will speak, but you won't hear. You, you'll get desensitized to it. And you'll just keep walking in it and walking in it and stressed out. You'll get back in your life and say, I don't know why things are working out. I don't know what's going on in my life. I don't know why I don't feel it. I just don't feel it anymore. I don't, you know, I, I don't know what's going on. And, and I don't know why things are such a mess. Listen, get back to the Word of God. Get the sin out of your life. And the peace of God is going to be able to reign in your heart. Amen. Many Christians today are living in unnecessary sin because they do not know what the Bible has to say about it. I mean, they're just ignorant of it. We don't know what sin is, therefore we live in sin, and the Holy Spirit doesn't uh, communicate with us about that sin because we don't know what the Word of God has to say about it. How I many of y'all have ever had something going on in your life and you didn't know it was wrong and, and all of a sudden you heard a sermon preached on it you read something in scripture about it and the Holy Spirit takes that truth and says, hey, this is your problem. How many of y'all have ever had that experience? Mm -hmm. And you, you give that thing to God and say, God, I'm sorry, I repent of that, I'm not going to live that way anymore. And then the peace of God just, man, here it is. Listen, that sin in our life hinders our ability to make good God-led decisions. Many people are, are making poor decisions for their life because they're sin in their life. It leads us to make bad decisions, thus creating more stressful situations. The other thing that it hinders, and again, I've already talked about this, but I just want to throw it in here real quickly, is marriage. Our children, our, our family life, our work life. Listen, we need the Word of God in all of these things. Amen? I need to know what God has to say about me as a husband. How many of all husbands know that God has a lot to say about us? Amen? Amen? Amen. How many wives know that God has a lot to say about that? How many of all know that God has a lot to say about parenting? Amen? Amen? 
And because we don't know the Word of God, all this stress is piled into our homes. It's unnecessary. We just follow God's prescription on things. We find ourselves at peace. As far as our children are concerned, our lack of interest in Scripture leads us to an inability to teach our children a biblical worldview. I'm telling you, that's absolutely the truth. That's one of the things that the locusts have definitely devoured in our society. It has devoured the Word of God out of our life, thus devouring our peace, and thus of devouring our ability to teach our children how to live with a biblical worldview. And because of their lack of, of a biblical worldview, they themselves are hindered in their ability to make good decisions, thus bringing stress into their lives. Never before, I don't think, have we ever lived in a generation of young people that are so stressed out as this generation is today. Amen? Amen. I, I do believe that. Young people that don't, they don't, have the answers. They don't know. They're looking for truth and, and so on. I can't get into all that right now, but I'm just telling you this. There's a great deal of unnecessary stress in our young people because we as parents and grandparents are failing to teach them God's truth. And they don't know how to make good decisions based on biblical principles. They have nothing to stand on. It's causing them so many problems, so many troubles. I want you to understand that it also leads us, uh, Julie, if you come on with me. And now I'm going to give you an example of what I'm talking about. It also leads us as parents to misplace our priorities for our children's lives. And what I'm saying, what I mean by that, because of our lack of interest in the Word of God as parents, it causes us to misplace priorities in our children's lives. We put more emphasis on their temporal education, upon their, their sports, upon their, you know, their future, and all that. And, we, we, and all that is fine and well and good and has its proper place, but understand this, that the Word of God is number one. Amen? That Jesus Christ is number one. If I, if I make my children successful in their education, I make my children successful in sports, I make my children successful in life, and they make all kinds of money, but I fail to give them a foundation of the Lord Jesus Christ, I am telling you, I have failed. Amen. And it causes me to put more emphasis on those things than the Word of God when the Word of God is not part of my life. And as an end result, our children get out of high school, they go to college or do whatever they're going to do, and the faith is totally lost on them. And it's unnecessary. Listen, make it a priority Amen. in your own life. And I'm going to tell you this, and if I can give you a word of advice, and I'll preach on this at some point. Don't make the Word of God a priority in their life if you're not going to make it a priority in your life. Amen. Don't tell them they're supposed to live by biblical standards when you don't even read the thing. Amen? Amen? It better be real to you before it's ever going to be real to them. That's just the truth. Don't sit in church, tell your kids to live godly lives. And then you yourself have no interest in, in the Word of God or the things of God at home. It's not going to work. That's a double standard. That's why Jesus called hypocrisy. Amen. Amen. And it's, it's, it's so destructive. This uh, past Friday, I, uh, you know, it's, deer, it's bow season and I'm busy in the shop and and uh, so it's been really, really warm weather, so the bow hunting's been terrible. And I, I told Bridget Friday, I haven't been fishing in just a little while. And I told Bridget, I, I said, I ain't going to get no business tonight. I got done in the shop, right? I got done early enough. I said, I'm going to load up my kayak. I'm going to go to the lake and try to catch some crappie. 
So I did that. I got down there and I was glad to be old. I just got down there. Oh, the water looked good, you know. And I pulled down there and I shut my truck off, opened my truck door, and I said, Man, it's like trash down here. It's in a, you know, I, I put my kayak in a little bed in the dirt road there. And I uh, said, Man, somebody burned some trash down here. And I walked in the back of my truck and I smelled here. I walked in front of my truck and I smelled it about halfway down my truck. And then I got in front of it and I was smelling here. That's my truck. And so I walked back to the to the driver's side door and man, my truck's on it's smoking. And so I pop the hood, I look in there, it ain't there, and I look at my front wheel, and my wheel is smoking. Now man, what in the world? And I touch my rim and it's sizzling hot. Now Jesse, you're gonna laugh at me having known being in the uh, I didn't know what to do. What in the world? I thought, man, my wheel bearings went out or my brakes or something wrong with them. Sure enough, my brake caliper had closed when I put on my brakes and it didn't release. So my caliper jumped. Don't mean much to me. I know what the thing looks like. That's just about it, right? So uh, anyway, I thought, man, what am I going to do? I'm down here in the middle of nowhere. I ain't a soul around. And I thought, oh, man. So I, I called Bridget and told her, I said, I'm having problems here. I said, man, I, my truck's messed up. And, and I said, can you, can you give me the fellow I know uh, that works on my vehicle sometimes over Lebanon? And I uh, said, man, can you get his number for me? And uh, so she did. I, he'll never answer his phone. And I just want to know if there's anything I can do. So I call him up and I say, hey, Aaron. And I said, man, here's the deal with my truck. And, and he's like, oh. And he said, you can't do nothing about it. There, you need some. He said, you got any tools? I said, no. <laughs> he said, well, let me call Dad and see what he, he has any suggestions. So he called me back about two minutes later. He said, oh, all right, Dad. says, put some vice grips on the brake line and clamp it off and it'll release and you can drive home like that, maybe. And I said, I don't have vice grips. <laughs> and so I got the pair of pliers. That's it. He said, well, take those pliers and get underneath there and break that blader screw loose and, and let a little fluid dribble out of it. Maybe it'll release. All right, I said, what's that bleed? What's that look like? <laughs> I know, Jesse, I'm an illiterate. I know it's so dumb. <laughs> and uh, so he's like, oh, he's, uh, so I got it. I said, oh, I think I see it. And I got my pliers. I, was, I don't know if I can turn this thing with these pliers, but I did. I cracked it over. A little fluid dribbled out of it. And I, my truck just ever so slightly rolled backwards. I said, it released. He said, well, he said, it, it might not do it again. But he said, if it does, just do that again. Maybe it'll get you home. Oh, I'm so stressed out. I'm 45 minutes from home. I don't like this kind of thing. And so, but I, I did, every so often I'd stop and go over and feel my brakes, you know, my, my disc. Got home. But I was so stressed out. And I told Bridget, I come in, I said, oh, I made it. Oh, thank the Lord. I made it home. I didn't catch my truck. Because I am telling you, I got burned it to the ground. I guarantee you if I drove it any further, it's going to ignite. I'm just sure of it. The, 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 the tire literally was smoking around the beat. And uh, so anyway, I uh, got home, but I told Bridget, I said, there's got to be a mess of this. And I said, you know what really stressed me out about this? If I'd have been a mechanic, it'd have been, I, I wouldn't know what to do. And it wouldn't have stressed me out nearly as bad. But I had no knowledge of what to do, and that caused my stress. Yeah, amen. And I said, you know, I think that's why so many Christians live in so much stress, because they have no knowledge of what God says about life. <coughs> they have no knowledge of the Word of God, and because they do not know what God has to say about certain situations, it stresses us completely out. Amen. And that's the truth. Amen. I want to encourage all of you this morning that are children of God. Number one, if you're not a child of God, if you are not born again this morning, I want to encourage you to come to the knowledge of Christ and find the peace that passes understanding. But to sustain that peace takes a knowledge of God's Word. I implore every Christian that sits in this building this morning, every Christian that listens to this sermon, I implore you, get into the Word of God. You say, well, I don't know how to study the Word of God. I'm telling you this. The only thing I can say is there's plenty of study helps out there if you want. There's plenty of methods you can use to study the Word of God. Okay, It's not just sitting down and reading words on a page. It's got to be more than that. But I'm going to tell you this, if you say, you know what, I'm going to do that. I'm going to, I'm going to dig into the Word of God. And you try.
truly want to learn the Word of God, God is going to develop in you a hunger, and He's going to show you how to get that accomplished. That's right. Amen. You're just going to have to believe that. And I implore you, get into the Word of God for your sake, for your family's sake, for your children's sake, for your marriage's sake, and for your dealings with other people's sake. For your own life and personal peace, get into the Word of God. Amen? Make it part of your daily life. Daily life. It is your daily bread. Amen? Amen. Make it part of your daily life. If you would stand, please, this morning. If you would, if you place off in the pedestal, bang, you have to be close your eyes and look around for just a moment. Again, just, I want to ask you if you're here, you're unsaved this morning. If you do not know the peace of God, this world has got you to a place of trouble and unrest you have no certainty in life and you understand that you'd like to have some certainty you'd like to have the peace of God I'd ask you this morning if you're unsaved and you want that peace I'm talking about unsaved people here first if you're unsaved and you want that peace you're willing to receive Jesus as your Savior can you slip up your hand this morning and say I want to receive Jesus Anyone at all? Anyone at all? I need Jesus. I need Jesus. 